I'm just logged in for the first time in a couple of days and I have noticed there's a bit of an invasion here, a piglin head invasion. These things really have come to a head nowadays so I guess I should clean it up but it's interesting to see what people do when I'm not on the server. Hello and welcome to another episode of Outlanders. If I'm correct this is episode 11, it's sort of hard to tell because I really can't remember some of these things with everything else that's going on. But anyway, yes, welcome to my industrial district once again. We are starting things off in the area in which we're going to do a lot of farms. But today I have to first clean up all these heads, but I plan to start myself a redstone factory. now. Off camera, I have started a little bit of a cobblestone thing, which if we just come over here and turn it on, which is just this lever back here. Yep, that's on. So all we have to do is stand here with our, either our fortune pick or our not fortune pick and just stand here, click away or hold click and it will work perfectly. You can see it's just a little bit slow, but it works very well. So we've got ourselves a cobblestone generator as well as a, where is it? a stone generator. So this should work very well for our redstone supplies. I was actually about to make my way to the shopping district and look there's even more head. I really wonder who's been doing this because it's a bit of a mystery and my guess would be it's either Pillman or Nutria who's online because they're the only two to have gold farms. I don't think anyone else has built themselves one yet or even two. That said I just was talking to Nutria and he definitely or he doesn't seem to have done it so I'm guessing Pillman which means at some point soon we're going to have to figure out, look if there's even more, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do as a return prank on Pillman. There's even more in here, this ridiculous number of heads he's managed to get, get us. But I suppose we can turn this back onto him and do something a little bit interesting, but we'll see what happens. Now I've made it to the shopping district because this shop has made quite a bit of profit. Now I did just open up the payment chest and it's completely empty because I have been taking out the profit. It's made probably around 30 to 40 diamonds and I have actually ran out of quite a few places of things. So what I need to do is actually get myself a lot more hoppers because I think Nutria is going to be buying those quite a bit. That said, everything else has been slow going. The comparative, the repeaters haven't really sold. The redstone lamps I don't think I've sold much. Dispensers has been pretty slow. So there's quite a few things. Oh wait, the pistons as well have been selling quite a bit. So there's quite a few things that are selling well and quite a few things that are not selling well. But my theory being is that eventually people are going to want redstone supplies. So eventually they're going to have to come shop at me or well, build it themselves. But you know, these things, you should always support the local business. I've now returned over to the new industrial district where I'm planning a new factory. Now what I want this area to be is a redstone factory so I can have my iron or my stone production, my cobblestone production, if I can find get it, my iron production as well. Now the thing with the iron farm is it needs to be it needs to be separate from another village. So over here there's definitely going to be a village in quotes. There's going to be lots of villages and lots of workstations which the game will count as a village because they're going to have beds in it as well. Now I believe looking at my previous season I need to have these at least 100 blocks apart. So if we say we've got the let's say we've got the center of the village around here this is 16 2600 or so we need over here to be at least 2700 before we even think about having the farm. So it needs to be at least here, which actually works very well actually now that I think about it. It's very, very well placed. So if I have the iron farm, say over here, dug into the ground, which I think will work, then it should work perfectly. Now, normally iron farms should go over the water because you need to make sure that you don't have any other things being loaded up, but that is not quite what I want to do here. I want to keep the ocean nice and pristine for future projects. So that means I'm going to need to build the factory from about here over to that way. So quite a thing, quite a big build indeed. In order for me to do that though, I need to mark out exactly where this iron farm is going to go. Now it needs to be the footprint of it is 18 by 18. So what I think I should do is just dig out a bit of a hole or at least the outline of it so I can see exactly where it's going to go so I can get an idea and then start building the framework of the factory around it to start with. So let's see, we want this to be, let's have a little bit of space over here. So if we go here and go 18 blocks this way, that's 12. If we go 18, 
that should be 18 there. And if we go 18 this way, so it should make another 17 blocks, which should be 35. Assuming I don't stuff this up. Something like that. Uh, yes, I think that's correct. So that's the boundary there, 38. That's too far. 35. So if I make the square like that, that should work very nicely. So now I can start on the framework, which is not going to be too easy to work out, I think. But, it, but at the same time, now that we've got an idea of how big we want this thing to be, we should be able to work out exactly, exactly what the framework around it and how big the building itself is going to be. With a little bit of time, I've got myself what I think would be a good layout. I've just surrounded the what's going to be the layout of the iron farm, and then had a, I think it's a four block walkway and then I've put another split on this side. However, it does mean that this cobblestone generator is very, very much in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do is tear it down and re remove it. Well, okay, let me start that again. I'm going to reposition it so it's facing right along here. So that does mean I'm going to have to replace everything. So what I'm going to do is yeah, rip it all out, place it down by one block. So we've got the floor where the grass level is right now and continue from there because I think that would work quite well. So we're going to get Magpie Cam in and get started on that now. And after that quick time lapse, I've got myself a, once again a working machine. I've actually improved it slightly or changed it slightly. So this block here will allow me to turn off and on the machine without having to go all the way to the back. So we can see it's working very nicely. If I switch over to Fortune, it'll also produce the cobblestone, which I'm going to desperately need. So that is working. Now you may also notice that I've sp I have put up all of these walls, or at least a fair bit of the walls. I am not particularly satisfied with the, with the way they look, I don't want it to turn into something like that. So what I am definitely considering is having these things go up above and then curve over on the outside. And then these things will be... The, the walls, I guess, will also curve round as well. I'm not sure how I'm going to do the back side or this left side, but that is a work in progress. Now what I also want to do is put in some insets or some outsets, I guess. Some, a single column maybe in the middle, that filled with something that will make it stand out, which is something I'm still working on. So quite a bit more planning to do, quite a bit more thinking on how to do this yet to go. And after a little bit of construction, I've come up with two slightly different designs. I've inset on this side the red terracotta, which 
sort of looks okay. It's not brilliant, but it sort of sort of works. It just is rather plain is where I'm gonna, trying to get at. On this side, I've done something similar, but I've put in a blue window, which I think looks a little bit better. I'm not entirely sold on one or the other, because I definitely think this side could work a little bit better. But this is probably the design I'm going to be going for roughly. So a little bit more thought. Now what I think I do is I start putting the roof on this, which will basically be just a gentle curve up and up and meeting in the middle somewhere, which I'm not sure if this is a two wide center or a one wide center. I guess I'm gonna find out. With a bit more building time, we have got ourselves one complete-ish factory. Now I'm not entirely satisfied with the way it looks. It's sort of janky. It's not quite the way I was thinking it was gonna look, but it does suit its purposes. Now I'm thinking of putting a redstone sign up here with, well, really just a redstone thing on the top. But most of all, I need to vent out all the dangerous chemicals that are gonna be from here. And I'm thinking, like any good responsible company, I'm just gonna dump it in the ocean because that's what supposedly responsible companies do. So if I just make a pipeline, so if I, yeah, yeah, that's in fact, this is quite a good place to do it. Uh, not like that, the other way around. But yeah, so if we just have a pipeline going somewhat from the company, from the factory, that should work very nicely. Uh, I think, there we go. And then like so. And then one in the bottom work just as well. Uh, no, not like that. Uh, like that, there we go. So there, a nice pipeline to work and we can extend it just a little bit more and that should work perfectly. Now I've done a little bit of designing for the logo on top of this resin factory and I think something like this, whatever here, it sort of looks like resin dust and it is definitely the vibe I'm going for. So it's going to be a little bit complicated because I don't have any more red concrete. I do have everything else but I think I should start on this, the black terracotta which is, should, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 wide and we've got 4, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that, that should actually fit just on top of there. So if I start on here and start placing it down, I sort of want it up here and four. So I want this directly over the door, which is here. So one, two, three, four, and that should leave three on each side and so on from there. So if I go two, and then it's one up and go on from there. So that shouldn't be too hard to do. Let's get that done. Now I've built it. I still don't know what the logo is going to look like when it's actually on this building, but let's have a quick turn around. And actually that looks pretty decent. I'm actually very happy with that. Very, very happy indeed. So that is our new logo for our factory. And I just can't get over how well it looks. It just really pops and really does look quite a bit like the redstone dust it's supposed to portray. Now, this bit may be a factory, but that doesn't mean I can't decorate a bit. Now, I'm going to do what I usually do in these situations and just do a lot of stone plus a bit of spruce on the side. So, a five, well, six actually, wide bit. So, I'll put stone underneath the, I'll put stone underneath the spruce leaf and then have this curve round to over there somewhere. So, it won't be very long or very big. And then on the sides, I'll have a little bit more flowers and such just to make it look a little bit different, even though this kind of thing is going to be pumping out a lot of terrible stuff. But that shouldn't take too long. I think I'll get Magpie Cam in here to take another quick time lapse and see how we go from there. <laughs> There we go, a pretty reasonable entrance. I'm not entirely happy with the way it looks, but it will do for the time being. Now, I've also done a little bit of work in here, just flooring up this. Now, what I want to do here is set up a bit of a production line. So I've got perhaps some tables in here that will do individual things. I'll have some 
workers in here to put together each individual piece. So that will work perfectly. And then I'm going to have a storage area on the back. I'm probably thinking that this area here, the iron farm, will have to be moved entirely. So it might be an entirely different place. So all the design work I did earlier, putting this iron farm in, probably might not work. But we'll see how what happens. I might be able to shift it up and then have something else on the bottom. But we'll see what happens. But I think that's going to bring today's episode to an end. So thank you very, very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.